Every time you book a flight, there's a hidden story behind it. A business case, a government process and months of planning. Airlines don't randomly fly between cities, whether it's Delhi to Ayodhya or Bengaluru to Srinagar. Each route is carefully chosen. So how do Indian airlines decide where to fly? Let's take you inside the boardrooms, strategy meetings and approval systems that shape our skies. Step 1. Is there demand for the route? The first thing airlines ask is are there enough people who want to travel between these two cities? This is called market demand analysis. They look at how many passengers are already traveling, even via connecting flights. The purpose of travel, business, tourism, students or migration. Search data on online booking platforms, festivals, seasonal peaks or emerging business hubs. For example, a city like Ayodhya suddenly sees demand due to religious tourism. That's a trigger for new flights. Step 2. Can the route make money? Airlines then ask, can we earn more than we'll spend on this route? They estimate all the costs. Fuel, the biggest expense, crew salaries, aircraft lease or ownership cost, maintenance, airport charges for landing, parking, terminal use, taxes and navigation fees. Then they estimate revenues like ticket sales, baggage fees and cargo capacity. If the numbers work out, the routes move forward. If not, even if demand exists, the route may get delayed or even rejected. Step 3. Regulatory approvals from DGCA or MOCA. Now the airline must apply for official permission. In India, all scheduled flights need approvals from DGCA for safety, route viability and aircraft usage. Ministry of Civil Aviation or MOCA for international agreements and overall route planning. Routes are approved in scheduled coordinated conferences usually held twice a year. For international flights, things get more complex. India must have a bilateral air services agreement with the other country. The agreement limits how many flights can operate, which cities are allowed, how many airlines from each country can fly. This is why, for example, you may see a cap on flights to places like Dubai or Singapore. Step 4. Securing airport slots and ground infrastructure. Even if a route is approved, the airline must get a slot, an exact takeoff and landing time at both airports. Busy airports like Mumbai, Delhi or Bengaluru are slot constrained. If no timing is available, the flights can't be scheduled. Airlines also check runway length. Can a large aircraft land safely? Step 5. Fitting it into the airline's network. The final step is integrating the new route into the airline's daily operations. Questions they consider. Will the aircraft be available at the right time? Can the crew be scheduled within duty limits? Does this flight connect well with other cities? For example, if a Delhi-Rachi flight arrives in time to connect passengers to Delhi-London, that adds more value to the route. Once everything fits, the route is officially launched. It's listed on airlines' websites. OTAs like Make My Trip and GDS systems used by travel agents. Promotions begin and bookings open. And just like that, a new flight is born. So, the next time you see a new flight route being announced, remember, it wasn't a guess. It was months of data crunching, approvals and planning. In part 2, we'll look at how flights are actually planned on the day of travel, from real-time weather to airways, fuel and pilot briefings. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video.